Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Check it out, I bought a paddle board. This is an 11 foot, three inch radar cadence soft top paddle board. I only paid 75 buckaroos for this thing on Facebook Marketplace. With that price point, I've gotta do a couple of fiberglass repairs before we can get this thing on the water. I'm gonna put it down on the table, we'll take a look at those. This first section of damage we're looking at is at the rear of the board, uh, this tail corner here. Uh, as you can see, this is the fin box, so that'll give you some orientation. I've gone ahead and uh, took off this foam kick tail. We'll just uh, true that up and glue that back on after the repair. And I've uh, carefully sliced away some of this bottom. To do that, I just used a razor blade scraper and a razor blade in my hand. Taking a look at this from the other direction, as you can see here, we've got quite a bit of damage at the corner. The fiberglass is delaminated away from the core and you can see that poking through here. Got ahead and opened up the repair area, you know, to the extent of the damage a little past. So we have uh, some good surface area to work on. This is uh, the major damage I want to fix and really not a big deal at all. I'm going to take you to the rail of the board up here and we're going to look at one little spot we'll fix too. We're about a third of the way back from the nose here and underneath this chewed up HDPE layer is what looks like some kind of puncture. Uh, not a whole lot of damage here. I think my plan is to just clean this up a little bit, maybe a little uh, neat epoxy followed by some micro. We'll smooth it out and stick this nasty piece of bottom back on just temporary. Got a wire wheel on my angle grinder and I'm going to go through and kind of clean up this foam residue so we can see what we're working with. On this section near the tail, it's more extensive than I thought. Um, looks like it goes all the way over to about the midline here. We need to rebuild this corner. And really, this is kind of a poor design. This is a very sharp corner. And I imagine that was weak to start with because uh, the glass wasn't, wasn't wrapping that very well. We also need to flip this thing over and chase a couple of these cracks that propagate around to the top of the board. We'll do that now. This guy runs up and across the top. We got the same situation going on over here. We need we actually need to peel this foam back a little bit more. All of that cleaned up pretty nicely. I'm going to go through now with the DA sander and prep the surface, get it ready for some new epoxy. I'm going to do the same thing on the rail side damage. I'll do that off camera. You guys have seen me sand probably a million times at this point. And like clockwork, it's pouring rain again. We're in the thick of some record setting rainfall. The last time my area saw this much rain was uh, 1981. So a little bit different than what we're used to. Mixing, mixing. My goal here on this back section is to cram as much epoxy as possible back under this delaminated section. Anywhere I can get it forced in there. And this is going to be messy, but it needs to happen. I probably could have used some more prep. There's some dirt and junk in there, but that's okay. Use a fast epoxy here. Temperatures are pretty cool, but hopefully this will kick for us. All right, now my plan is to take some masking tape. And just stick this stuff to the general shape it needs to be. Use a little piece of scrap foam here to get the downward pressure I'm looking for. All 
Well, that was a beautiful piece of tape right there. Really squished everything in how we want it. Clean up some of these drips. We're going to leave that as is secure. We'll come back when it's cured. This little ding on the rail side. Just going to brush a little neat epoxy on it. Super stiff filler like we like it. Just going to take some of this and fill that void up. Try not to make a mess. A little camera reposition so you can see what's going on. Got this real lightweight conformable cloth here. I'm not even sure the specs on this actually, but just a scrap left over from something else. We're gonna start with the patch that just covers the repair. Then we'll put one on that's a little bit larger. First patch, uh, a little smaller. Oh yeah. Now try to not oversaturate that filler so it doesn't start running everywhere. Nice. Slightly larger. This little thing's all but done. We'll let that cure out. Probably give it just the lightest quick sand. And run it. Sweet. I'll bring you back when we get to the rest of that tail section. It's been a couple hours and this resin is cured up. Not all the way, but I think enough to take this tape off. So we're going to see how that goes. I did fill some of these big voids with some of that leftover micro off camera. That just gave us a little bit of a head start on getting the shape back. Felt like a tragedy to waste the stuff. Nice. Unfortunately, the stuff's not cure enough to sand, so we can't move on yet. You see how it dents with my finger now. We're going to wait for it to fully cure out probably tomorrow morning. I'll go ahead and rough shape this, and then we're going to fare everything in with some of this micro before we add some glass cloth back to it. Take you over here to this uh, other repair that's largely finished at this point. And this guy came out sweet, nice and strong, no chance of getting water in that uh, core, so we're good to go there. It's been about 10-12 hours now, and as you can see, everything's cured up nicely. I've gone ahead and knocked off the high points with just a hand sanding block, and now I'm going to give everything a once over with the DA. All right, you can see we still have a few voids yet to fill. So I'm gonna mix up some epoxy with some micro filler and do that now. Also on this top side of the deck, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this part where the core is crushed a little bit. Just kinda build this shape back so it's nice and smooth flowing. Not super necessary. That's actually gonna add a little bit of weight with that filler, but we're here, we're already working in this area and uh, I think I'm gonna kinda make that a little nicer. Just gonna start by getting a little neat epoxy on this surface. We're gonna put some micro on. This just helps everything stick nicely. Not too much or your, your micro filler will get all runny. Just enough to wet things out. Now I'll mix our filler into this. Battery died there more than once, I think, while I was applying this stuff, but I'll give you a quick overview now. We've got this shape built up nicely, got all our voids filled. I'll show you this side. Same thing on this side, we just filled that void where that big ridge of crushed core was, kind of smoothed everything out. We're going to let this stuff cure out, I'll come back and sand it, and then we'll put some glass on this corner and be just about done. It's the next day, this stuff has cured up nicely. And I'm going to do a little hand sanding on these radiuses here, and we'll bust out the DA again. Well, 
do the same thing on this bottom side. Sweet. I think we're ready for some glass. In an effort to do both sides at once, I've got the board on its side here. Just mixed up some epoxy. There's a couple spots, one little void there, one little void there, one little void there that I put some micro in. All right. So this guy, I'll put right along here. I'm trying to stay relatively tidy here. Not run a bunch of excess resin everywhere. Reposition you guys so you can see what I'm working on maybe. Scissors are the worst. This tight little corner right here is probably the most fidgety spot of this whole thing. Nice. Resin's starting to heat up in my cup, so I gotta work a little faster. Resin's really starting to kick now. Which is good, that means this thing will be ready to sand in a jiffy. I may try to just, oh, we're gelling up in the cup. That's generally a good sign to stop. I'm going to add just a couple little patches in here. Try to strengthen that crack up there. Little uh, belt and suspenders approach since we're already here. That'll get covered up, so no worries there. Let's see, I'm going to do one. Right on this side also. Probably should have started with these smaller pieces, but it's the way she goes. All right, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more resin quick to wet those guys out and we will be all fixed up. All right. We're glassed up. We're gonna let this stuff cure off. I'll probably wait overnight. We'll uh, come back with some 80 grit. Just knock the high spots off. We don't wanna do any crazy sanding. We'll knock the high spots off and give it a little tooth so we can uh, glue our foam material back down and hide all of this. It's a couple days later here. I got a little distracted, but as you can see, everything's cured out nicely. We're going to go through and do a little hand sanding, taking care not to break through. This isn't very much glass we put on here. And I'm going to hit this big flat part with the DA. And it'll be the same process on this side. I'm going to be using contact cement to uh, re-adhere this foam. This is a tear you guys haven't seen yet, but we'll also use this stuff to uh, reattach the foam we took off to make the repair. I went ahead and prepped these uh, glue surfaces with a little uh, lacquer thinner just to remove any little dirt or oils or anything that was left. This one's not super clean, but I didn't want to try to get in there to sand it. Hopefully this works as good as I'm planning on because I don't have a plan B and I want to go paddling tomorrow and try to get this edge also so that kind of sticks that edge back together. The trick with contact cement is that you uh, coat both surfaces. So we'll do this little flap that's hanging up here. Get the edges of that also. Now we're going to wait for everything to tack up nicely, maybe not get a whole lot of cat hair in there. A little bit too late for that. Oh yeah, this back section is good to go. As is the piece that goes in. Same thing, we've actually got some nice registration marks with our lines. Don't stick that down. So we're going to start right there. Like a glove! Too easy. Nobody's ever gonna know. Sweet. 
Got a couple ugly little pockets, but what can you do? Getting ready to do this back corner, but uh, this whole bottom is beat up from the street up. And I'm guessing it's not going to be on there for a whole lot longer. I think uh, after this first trip, I'll strip this stuff off. We'll put an extra layer of glass on this, get everything fared out smooth, and hit it with some shiny paint. Again, we're going to use our cracks as registration marks. Oh, gosh. Shoot. Darn it. Oh, actually, that went pretty good. Slip this guy in before that one. Not too bad. And again, this is uh, super duper temporary. Final piece of the puzzle going on. Hopefully. All right, and there you have it. I've got it setting on that tail bumper we just glued just to hold some pressure on it. As you can see, I got the camper in the truck. Dale's up there patiently waiting. Because tomorrow, we're going paddling. Long awaited return to YouTube video. I think it's been over a hundred days since I put a video up. Uh, that was never my intention, but here we are. As you can see, the old Marketplace special paddleboard performed flawlessly. Didn't take a whole lot of video of that, mostly because I didn't do a whole lot of paddling. Dale and I made a couple of laps, uh, similar to the one you saw in the video, but with the waterproof back on the GoPro, audio is not that great. There's no stabilization in the unit I have, so it's kind of shaky. Uh, you know, not, not the best viewing experience, so we kept that to a minimum. Uh, Old Dale did great on the paddleboard, picked it up immediately, like he's been uh, riding the waves his whole life, so I was pretty happy about that. Another project that uh, kept me from shooting video was a custom staircase. I'll roll that footage right now. Building this set of stairs. Terrible lighting in here, there's no electricity at the moment. Pretty sweet staircase though. Thought I'd just shoot a couple shots of this while I was here. That was another one of those bucket list projects. I've always wanted to do a uh, spiral staircase out of steel. I actually built it right over here in the shop. Uh, and thinking back on it, I probably should have shot some video on that, but I just didn't. Um, you know, welding welding shop is not necessarily a great environment for my camera gear. I'll uh, use that as my number one excuse, but also it's just uh, you know high level of difficulty. I didn't need to be juggling camera and framing shots and messing with audio at the same time. The right of the frame here, you can see one of the projects that's uh, kept me from posting any videos, and I'm building a whole kitchen full of custom cabinets. Uh, I've never done that before, but this has been a really fun learning experience. I've been doing some other stuff. Uh, the rain still hasn't cleared off. We've had some good weather, but uh, in the background you may hear some rumbles of thunder. 
We've got uh, another storm rolling in tonight. Can't really catch a break on the weather. If it's going to be a nice day and I can get out and do some climbing or some running, it's going to rain and so that, that you know, keeps you off the rocks and the trails to preserve the, the natural environment. And if it's not raining, it's you know, well over 100 degrees right now. Uh, we just went through a stretch of over 100 degrees and we've got more on the horizon. So, you know, kind of hunkering down in the shade for the time being. I have gotten the camper out a few times and it's still working flawlessly. I absolutely love this whole setup, the truck and the camper. In upcoming videos, I've got a cooler build we're going to do. The cooler is going to be sweet because it's going to be built just like the camper and it'll cover all the construction techniques of the camper in one you know, compact, neat video, so that would be great. Additionally, I still need to finish the lighting and some of the electrical in the camper. It's just not super necessary. I mean, a, a total luxury, don't get me wrong, and we're still going to do it, but, you know, most of the time you're outside at dark anyway, and into the outdoors you're wearing a headlamp, and so I'm just so used to that. I haven't, haven't taken the time to wire in the lights or finish the upper cabinet, so be looking forward to a video on that too. Alright everybody, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Really unfortunate that smell of vision is not a thing. This is probably the uh, best smelling, best looking frozen pizza I've ever done.